Today we have a story of kicking out entitled parents after five years of living with them. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, I'm a mom. How one entitled mother's antics led to a tram shutdown. I had an encounter today that I just have to share with this community. So I was in a packed tram, minding my own business, when I noticed an entitled mother with her three kids in the same wagon. The scene was already set for a typical entitled parent story, but little did I know how much it would escalate. For reference, there are two types of trams where I live. The old type with small doors and high stairs where wheelchairs and strollers are not allowed, and the new ones which are accessible. You guessed it. The entitled mom made it onto the old tram I was on, even though the next accessible tram was just five minutes away according to the screens. Her kids were already whining and extremely unruly. The four of them, along with their huge stroller, occupied a significant part of the tram. It was 6 p.m., peak commuting time, so the tram was packed with people returning home from work. The situation was ripe for more entitled behavior and oh did it deliver. The tram stops and it's finally time for the crotch goblin farm to exit, but just when I thought the worst was over, something happens. One of the brats had a hard shell backpack which got stuck in the old forcefully closing door. The conductor had to get out to try and free the trolley and understandably she was pretty angry about the situation. What blew my mind was the entitled mom's reaction. Instead of apologizing or taking responsibility, she started crying out, I am a mother, I have three little children, as if that somehow exempted her from being responsible for any damage caused to the tram. It was baffling how she played the mother card instead of acknowledging the inconvenience and potential harm caused by her and her kids. The situation left many of us in the tram shaking our heads in disbelief. Finally, the trolley gets unstuck and the entitled mom and her horde leave, but that's not the end of it. The best, or should I say worst, was yet to happen. The door was now broken and the tram couldn't continue its journey. Thanks to the actions of this entitled parent, all of us had to disembark in the awful cold and rainy weather. There I was, forced to run through the rain just to make it to my appointment on time. The whole ordeal was frustrating to say the least and a perfect example on how a dumb parent's entitlement can affect so many others. Besides, if her kids got stuck in the door instead, it could have turned out pretty ugly. This absolutely could have gone so much more worse. I mean, I feel like somebody that was that reckless, I don't know how well they can enforce it, but like they should probably not even be allowed on these old trams just for the safety of her and her kids. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy these stories of entitled parents, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is Karen tells a teen to stop playing with his six-year-old twin brothers. So, for context, I have a set of twin brothers who are almost 10 years younger than me. I'm a 16-year-old male living in the US and every year, my family, I, and sometimes my grandmas, go to a pumpkin patch that doubles as an apple orchard. And you can go to three different areas. One being the main farm, one being where the corn maze is, and one where you pick out your pumpkins. There's also a little train ride that my brothers love, along with my one-year-old baby brother. Anyways, on to the story. The cast is as follows. Entitled kid, entitled mom, and dad, my dad. So this happened around two to four months ago. It's the height of picking pumpkins for Thanksgiving and or Halloween. In the main farm area of the pumpkin patch, there's a whole bunch of things for kids to do. This particular story happens in a giant sand pit and my brothers and parents had already been there longer than us due to me and my grandma watching American football, not soccer, don't get confused, as I'm a huge football fan and play it. So we had to leave later because there's an early game being played in London in England or Munich in Germany. Note, most football games are played between 12pm to 7.30 or 8pm. This game was being played at 8.30 a.m. and it was a team I wanted to lose playing someone I wanted to win. So when me and my grandma arrive to the pumpkin patch and we get in, I get a call from my dad saying to meet them over at the sand pit or box or whatever you want to call it. When we get there, my little brothers are working on a really nice tunnel. Not part of the story, I was just proud of them. And they were using two to three toys in total to build it. So I go over and grab a toy bulldozer because my brothers wanted to play with me and I happily agree since when I was little, my older half brother would do the same and I like playing with toy machinery. So fast forward half an hour to an hour and me and my brothers are playing with the toys and the following interaction ensues and all names are fake. 
Jack says, I'm going to get a drink of water, I'll be right back. Can you make sure someone doesn't take my bulldozer? I say, sure, just be quick. So he runs over to get a drink of water, and not even five seconds later I noticed a kid playing with a toy Jack was playing with. So with my best friendly smile and little kid voice, I ask him the following question. Hey, my little brother is playing with this and he's just getting a drink of water and he'll be upset if he comes back and sees the stuff he made is being destroyed and someone was playing with the thing he was playing with? Entitled Kid looks up and with this snarky response he says, No, my mom said I can play with it. I said, well, you see, this is the only bulldozer left, but there's a... And without even letting me finish my sentence, Entitled Mother pipes in and says, No, he can play with it. There's no one playing with it. He can play with it. I say, well, my brother's playing with it, and this is the last bulldozer here. She replies, you will give my baby the bulldozer. At this point, I'm getting angry, but I keep my cool for now, and I don't like being told by people I don't know what I can and can't do. I say, but this is a public place, and I can save this for my six-year-old brother who happened to be playing with it already, and he would have been gone for no more than 45 seconds. She says, I don't care, my baby deserves that toy. At this point, I'm fed up with her bull, and I stand up and I say, once again, it's a pub. She chimes in, give it to him now. You're what, like 10? Shouldn't be playing with that anyways. After that, I'm completely done. I said, me? 10? Yes, I know I'm a 10, but not 10 years old, and I look better than you, thank you very much. I can get aggressive when I'm mad, and I can be quite insulting. She says, what? You're not 10? And don't be racist and tell me I'm not a 10-year-old. Yes, she thought I was talking about age. I said, no, in fact, I'm 16. She said, 16? That's even worse for you to be playing with kids. I give her a what the freak are you thinking, lady look. I said, but these are my brothers. And tell me, tell me how that's worse to be playing with. My dad cuts me off. I'm not using my real name. Dad said, Josh, come over here. I want to talk to you. I looked at my brother and said, do you want to go somewhere else? And he said, yes, please. He was on the verge of crying and I walked him over to our dad. When we got to my dad, I start saying, did I do something wrong? I was just trying to, he said, just drop it and sit here next to me. Then he said something really unexpected. Don't let the Karen get to you. I looked at him and laughed and said that I didn't know he knew that term. So that's my story. I never saw that woman again the rest of the time and I was glad. I hope this found all of you well and I thought I'd put my story out there. Shout out to my wonderful grandmas and parents. They're amazing. It's always awesome if you have that experience with your parents where they share some term or knowledge that you had no idea that they had any business knowing. Honestly, just them revealing that they knew the term Karen was enough to snap you out of that negative feeling you were having. It just kind of completely snaps you out of it in a funny way. Our next story is, my mother got rude with a friend of mine and wonders why we won't help her. My mother just assumes that my friends are just there to take her BS, and I just waited until one of my friends just yelled at her. My friend Tyler can be entitled, but right now, my mother is the entitled one. She just expects my friends to take her abuse and just roll with it. Tyler decided to tell me he won't be watching her dog and cats on the next vacation. I was frustrated because now my mother expects me to use my PTO and stay up at her house to watch the animals because, as she said it, I do not have plans. Newsflash, the vacation isn't until July and the first weekend where I'll be at a convention, and I already paid for the tickets. I told my mother who just said, well, can't you just go the week after? I told her that conventions don't work like that and she's going to have to pay a pet hotel because I'm not going to give up PTO to be a pet sitter. I also had reminded her that I'm a grown but adult and have a life. She's still acting all entitled and like I owe her something, which I don't. She doesn't seem to understand that she's acting like a jerk. It's almost Christmas and she has the gall to demand my PTO be used for her vacation. I'm saving my PTO and I want to use it for either emergencies or a time for myself. To sum it up, my entitled mother mouthed off to a friend and then decides I have to make time for her. I think it's definitely a situation where you just learned to teach them that you're not dependable. 
It's not that in actuality you're not a dependable person, it's just you don't want to be dependable to an entitled person like that. I don't know if she's going to allow you to be like that and still have a relationship with you, but the sooner she realizes they can't just expect you to pick up everything that they're dropping, definitely the better for OP. Our next story is, I loathe my parents to the point where I want to hurt them. Both my parents were physically and emotionally abusive to each other and to me. They have no remorse to what they've done in the past. I, being the good daughter, applied for their green card so they can enjoy their retirement in the United States. I thought things would be different, but they've gotten worse. I can't stand my abusive father at all, but he's currently not in the US. My narcissist perfectionist mother is living with me, at least she was better than my father, but blamed me because I was a daughter, not a son. I tried to save her from the abuse, but was hit and beaten too along with her. I hate her for staying with him. She doesn't believe that after so many years of marriage, she should leave him. He doesn't hit or argue with her anymore. They are both vile because they destroyed my childhood. My mom's taking care of my 11 month old. She took early retirement. She was going to retire next year, but I guilt tripped her into staying. She loves my son. I hate my mom for never admitting that she is wrong and what she did was wrong. She wants to play victim all the time and tells her husband everything. I pay her weekly $250 because she takes care of my son. I expect her to do certain things, but she doesn't listen. She feels like she can do whatever she can. She helps, but she does things her own way. She doesn't want to adjust, but wants to live in the US and work. For a week, I've been teaching her how to drive and she never follows directions. I'm giving directions from the back seat since I have two kids sitting in the back. She goes into traffic, doesn't know what a yield is and almost got us in a crash today and yesterday. She doesn't admit her faults and stops in the middle of the road or will go even if cars are coming at full speed. I feel bad because I grabbed her hair from the back seat today. She keeps doing the same crap again and again. I reminded her of the times she slapped and beat me with shoes. I don't know, but... I want her to suffer. I feel like a bad person because she's taking care of my kid, but how dare she forgive my father for all the crap he put us through and then tells me to move on. I told her she destroyed my childhood. She tells me I treat her very badly and rubs it in her face that I pay her and when she's old she'll pay me $300 and I wouldn't do half the things she does. I told her I won't because she can rot with her husband and hopes he lays his hands on her senseless in her old age. I despise her. As soon as I finish in May, I want her gone. She is ungrateful and tells me I didn't do any favor by teaching her how to drive. I told her she can pay for driving school. She expects me to drive her around her doctor's appointments, pick her medicines, take her for shopping. She is more than capable of doing these things, but I am her chauffeur. I know I need to forgive them so they can be a part of my children's life, but I can't. The more she loves my son, the more I hate her because she was cruel to me. I don't know how to deal with this anger and rage. I mean, these people are slash were violent people that never could apologize, own up, or reform their ways. I think it's ultimately a good thing if OP keeps their kids away from them. And considering the way OP feels, to the point where they're almost snapping trying to associate with these people, it's probably for the best that they just don't be around them. It's okay to not forgive people, you don't have to forgive them. And just because they're your parents or your kids' grandparents doesn't mean that they have to be in their lives. This next story is, Entitled Mother Demands Her Toddler Use An Extra Seat That OP Paid For I, 34-year-old female, am obese. I'm actively working toward losing weight and I've made progress, but I'm still obese as I'm typing this. I'm going over to see my brother and his husband for Christmas across the country, and because I'm fat, I booked an extra seat so everyone can be more comfortable. I know it sucks having to pay for an extra seat, but it is what it is. I know Southwest Airlines has this customer of size policy, but I've had some bad experiences with Southwest even before I was obese, so I wasn't doing that and it's mostly my fault I even got fat. Everything goes smoothly from checking in to security and boarding, at least at first. This woman comes to my row with a boy who appeared to be about a year old. She told me to squeeze into one seat so her son could sit in the other. She told me, not asked. I told her no and that I paid for the seat for the extra space. She makes a big fuss over it which got the flight attendant's attention. She told the flight attendant I was stealing the seat from her son. Then I showed my boarding passes proving that I in fact paid for the extra seat. 
The flight attendant asked me if I could try to squeeze in, but I said no, that I wanted the extra seat I paid for. The boy, who the mom said is 18 months old, was supposed to sit in her lap so he could do just that. The flight attendant eventually told the mom to put her son in her lap. I got dirty looks and passive aggressive remarks from her for the entire flight, and I do feel a little bad because the boy looked hard to control, so am I the jerk? Ultimately, I think this is a situation where you feel bad just because you have a good heart and you want to accommodate and help people, but you also paid for that seat. You have every right for that seat, you've had every expectation, and financially, you shouldn't be expected to give up that seat and experience that you paid for. Our next story is, for around 20 minutes, a toddler was hitting the tip of their fork against their plate at a sit-down restaurant. The toddler wasn't simply learning how to use utensils, he wasn't trying to eat the food, he was essentially stabbing his plate with the fork over and over and over and over. The sound irked me in a similar way to nails on a chalkboard. Sometimes he'd stop for a couple of minutes and I'd relax a bit, but then he'd start again. This actually triggered a pretty bad headache for my friend. The mom did not care whatsoever. Someone at my table politely asked if someone could take the fork away from the toddler, and she said that he'd cry if she took it away. We then overheard her talking about how ridiculous some people were about children in public spaces. Now, this wasn't an extremely quiet and expensive restaurant, but it was still a sit-down restaurant. Not McDonald's or a super loud place. The biggest mystery to me is how the noise didn't hurt any of the moms at the other table. It was a group of three moms and their kids. Also, the other kids at the table were loud and misbehaving too, but they didn't bother us. I think it depends on the restaurant, if it's like a proper sit-down restaurant or if it's like a still kind of fast casual sit-down restaurant, maybe it varies. I mean, if it's distracting enough and like it's causing a headache, honestly, don't be afraid to flag down a waiter and say so. I mean, I'm sure they'd probably be willing to do something to try to accommodate for that. They don't want their customers to have such a negative experience. Certainly, I wouldn't hope that they would want to advertise that they would support somebody that just keeps making such a god-awful sound in their restaurant. It almost becomes a thing where if you witness this for 20 minutes, does it not become almost a tough luck situation because you haven't talked to a member of staff yet? Our next story is, my dad made me spend my own money on groceries. Hi, I'm a lurker of the subreddit, but I've never really had anything entitled parents worthy until now. So I was chilling, doing schoolwork and watching anime, and my dad asked me if I could walk to the store and buy some groceries for him. Even though he was just sitting on the couch watching football, he could have done it himself. It's not a massive bother for me as the store is only a mile away and I wanted to go for a walk anyways. I walked to the store and bought the groceries myself. The total was around $50, I paid in cash, thinking he would pay me back when I got home. Well, I got home and asked him to pay me back the cash that I spent at the store. He said, and I quote, If you want the money back, do more chores around the house. I got pretty mad and started demanding the money that I spent on groceries that only he would use. He told me that he would give me 5 bucks for walking a mile to the store and back with 10 pounds of groceries. I told him he was out of his freaking mind. Well, one thing led to another and now I'm not allowed to use the PS5 for a month. I'm beyond ticked at this entire situation. Listen, if you're going to send your kid off to the store to buy groceries, okay, I get it, you're going to try to get that free child labor, but you can't expect your kid to spend their money on the groceries that you're forcing them to fetch to get. Needless to say, next time you're going to go, money up front, or I'm not going. Not getting burned twice on a situation like that. This next story is, my anti-internet stepdad is constantly unplugging the internet because he thinks I'm a junkie and an addict. I, 22 year old male, am a very introverted person, causing me to make more friends on the internet rather than in person. I live with my mom, 50, and my stepdad, 42 year old male. My stepdad is a very overly right wing anti-video game, anti-internet bible thumper who has recently demanded I stop playing video games in my spare time and start reading the bible. I myself am a Christian, but he has pushed it so far that he's threatening me with eviction if I dare tell him to mind his own business and to respect my hobbies. He has resorted to completely unplugging the internet whenever he hears me talking with friends or playing a game. He claims I'm a junkie and an addict who defies God and lives in sin. But all I do is talk with my buddies on Discord. 
A majority of the time we aren't even playing games, just talking. His little anti-internet crusade has caused me to be unable to apply for jobs in a professional setting. My mom has done nothing to help me, only blindly following my stepdad because she herself is a huge narcissist but that's a whole other story. They are both constantly saying that video games are as bad as methamphetamine. The worst part is when they unplug the internet, they laugh and think it's funny when they hear me walk downstairs to confront them. My brother, 19 year old male, has moved in with my bio dad, 50 year old male, completely due to the internet constantly being unplugged and affecting his school grades. I won't move in with my bio dad due to his very abusive verbal behavior towards women. Although he has been getting help, I can't live with it. I can't afford to move out and I don't have any friends to roommate with, so I'm stuck living with an anti-internet nutcase. I mean, I really do think it's a situation where you should kind of use it as fuel to try to get yourself in a situation where you can at least afford some kind of internet if it's not realistic for you to try to move out. Otherwise, I would look at maybe like a phone plan that can give you hotspot. Depending on what phone plan you have right now, you might be able to tether right to your own computer and use that for internet. Though I wish you the best of luck if they find out about that and you have even more confrontation. This next story is, parents living in my home for the last 5 years is over. I am a 100% permanently disabled US Army vet. My parents have been living with me in my Alaskan home for the last 5 years. They've paid me nothing for rent during all this time, not even for electricity, and my mother makes over $140,000 a year. I've included a few recordings of the things they've said. I was complaining to my dad I can't afford organic food, that he wants to eat because I need to buy food everyone can eat, but I hate the food they buy. I said poor people can't afford organic food. At 1628 my dad says, what are poor people spending their money on? I said I'm paying my home and electricity and I can't afford expensive food. My mom had me trade in my cheap $250 a month car for a brand new Jeep Gladiator. She said you absolutely need it here in Alaska and they have their own Gladiator. She had me pay $600 a month for the last two years to her while she was driving it to work every day. I've only been able to drive it three times in 2023 so far because they've been hiding the keys. I told my dad I don't even have keys to my own house. He said I have a spare outside I can use. It's in one of the recordings somewhere. I found out I was a co-signer, not the borrower on the Jeep too. I have no legal right to the vehicle and it has disabled veteran license plates. My mom refuses to tell me the bank the loans through so I can request a co-signer removal. In 2020, I had a falling out with them. I wanted them to move out badly. I didn't know how to legally remove them, so I threw all their belongings in the trash while they both were gone on a business trip. They called the cops on me, and I was jailed. The charges were dropped, but I refused to move back into the house with them. My mother successfully got a power of attorney over my finances, even though I had a VA fiduciary. I had a nervous breakdown from all the manipulation they've been doing to me and felt trapped like I couldn't escape my own dang home. I was homeless for a few months and never received an apology. Nothing. I moved back with them after a few months of being homeless, losing my backpack and wallet, everything I had had to call them to mail me my passport and a plane ticket back home. This year, my mother made me split a $2,500 plane ticket for her mom to come visit and buy new couches for the living room. All this is documented. When I first moved into my house with them, my dad asked me to request money from my fiduciary to buy firewood for the wood stove. After I received about $900, he said he needed it to buy metal to build his own trailer and that we can cut our own firewood to save money. Since they've lived here with me since 2018, they've bought new in cash, two snowmobiles, four-wheeler, side-by-side, and three military Humvees, totaling around $70,000. All this is in the recordings as proof. I'm hiring an attorney to evict them. I found a free one in Alaska that helps disabled veterans. I'll keep you guys posted. Here are some other recordings of their bull. Only driven Jeep I was paying for two times in 2023. Want me to sell my home and move north. My dad saying look for the benefit of others. They want to buy another snowmobile. I'm stopping to pay the Jeep they said was mine. I have no friends. Hopefully a miracle happens and I can get my life back on track. Certainly it seems like they're using OP for their money and just assets and goodwill. Hopefully OP can get these guys evicted and get their life back on track being able to actually just focus on themselves. 
This next story is the moment I realized I wasn't a little kid anymore. I was on my way back to my home when I heard some guys talking about the moment they realized they were not little kids anymore. I didn't listen to all of their conversation, but that phrase stayed on my head for a while and made me ask myself about the moment I realized I wasn't a little kid anymore. The answer, when I was 16, after my mother whipped me with a belt from the back and I didn't fall to the ground in pain. I have lots of stories like this, but this one had stayed with me over the years. I remember at that age my daily routine was 2.30, arrive home from school, 2.30 to 4.30, change clothes, eat, chores and homework, 5 to 6 o'clock, training, and the rest of the day I used it on all the remaining things. That day, I remember arriving home and finding my mother screaming at my brother, he was 14, and on that age he had a talent to get in trouble and mess with people, teachers, classmates, everyone. One of my mother's ways to raise us was that if one of us did something wrong, both would be corrected. She justified it by saying it was a preventative method to dissuade another one of doing that thing. At this day, I can only think about it as being grounded without doing anything. That day, the moment I arrived, she started to yell at me too, accusing me to be lazy, useless, the usual ones. I took it as I was used to and proceeded to do my routine. I did some of my homework until it was time to go to my training, but the moment my mother saw me getting ready, she started berating me about how both of us, yes, every time she scolded one of us, she would talk in plural, were useless, disgusting pigs. That we didn't have any love to our home, because if we have any, we would be cleaning it until it was perfect. I still don't know where that obsession about cleaning comes from. That it was our fault the house was disgusting and that I will not go anywhere until the house was clean. She wanted me to clean all the furniture in her way. Her way was cleaning it with a wet rag, then doing it again with a dry rag, then again with wood oil, and then again with another dry rag. Four times, each one. I told her that I would have enough time to do that, that I would do it later, and that it wasn't urgent because I cleaned the furniture yesterday. She said, son of a bench, don't dare talk back to me. I'm your mother and if I give an order, you don't question, you do it. That was her answer. I remember that moment as one of the first times I stood up against her, because I chose to go to my training instead of wasting my day on a useless chore. Well, she didn't like it. When I returned, she started again with the screams, name calling and threats. I told her that I'll do it at that moment, but somehow that made her even more angry, saying I should have done it the instant she ordered it, not when I wanted to do it. She kept berating me for about 30 minutes when I made the mistake of breathing too hard, which she took as a sign of disrespect. Don't dare roll your eyes and stop making freaking faces or I'll slap you back to normal. I was done at that point, so I told her to do what she wants. Her face went red and ran to her room and came back a couple seconds later with my father's belt in her hand. My first reaction was of fear. All my childhood I knew that the moment she grabs the belt, she would hit me until she got tired, no matter how much I cried or screamed. But after the first hit, I was really surprised I wasn't on the floor rolling for the pain. It didn't hurt, and for some reason I got so, so angry. I was so tired of that situation that when she tried to hit me again, I grabbed the belt and didn't let it go. She started screaming like crazy, ordering me to let it go, but I didn't. She tried to pull it, but I grabbed it with everything I had. Her face was a mix of desperation, angry, and impotence. She kept telling me that she was my mother, that I had to obey her, and when that didn't work, she started screaming that I was hurting her. I was hurting my own mother. Meanwhile, she started to dig her nails on my hands and arms, to hit me with her fists. She was so desperate that she even bit my fingers to make me let go of the belt, but I didn't. With all that noise, my father finally showed, asking what was happening. Stupidly, I believed she would behave with my father there, so I let go of the belt and started to explain to him everything. While I was showing him the nails and teeth marks, when behind me, I heard a scream followed by a hit on my back. She whipped me with the belt on my back. My brother told me that, after that, I glared at my mother in a way he had never saw me do it. I only know that she didn't try it again. The consequence is, I was grounded for two months. My father didn't do anything. He got on her side. Even if she was wrong, she is your mother and you must respect and obey her. That was the answer. The good side is, that was the last time she ever physically hurt me. Both of us realized that afternoon, 
that I wasn't a little kid anymore. She was losing power, losing control. Also, that was the moment I realized I wanted to get away from her. Well, I certainly hope for OP's sake that they did get away from her. It's tragic that you have to realize you're not a little kid anymore because of the actions from abusive parents. But for people who grow up and do experience that they're old and strong enough to not accept this kind of punishment anymore, at least there's some very, albeit small, silver lining to it. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.